Hello, welcome and thanks for choosing this video course. In this video, we're going to talk about what it takes to close high-paying clients. How many of you ever think, it's impossible for me or I'm not sure whether I can close high-paying clients? I am an introverted person, I'm too shy or I'm not comfortable talking with those high-paying clients that I need to deal with, with selling. Selling is not my strength. I'm not good enough in selling and I'll never be able to sell to high-paying clients. So with these negative and disturbing thoughts, you become less confident and automatically downgrade yourself that you cannot do what you actually can do. Not finding anything that could act as a booster will only make you keep feeling discouraged and afraid to do things. Do or do not, there is no try. It is one of the most famous quotes from the Star Wars series that each of you seems to know. Hence, the first step that you should take in order to sell to high-paying clients is to work on your belief system. If you have limiting beliefs in yourself, it will not bring you far. This is one of the key factors that holds most people back from closing high-paying clients. Marketing and selling high-end services is not something that you can make a 360-degree change to overnight. Yet it's still possible to have a sustainable business that's more rewarding and satisfying. Attracting more high-paying clients is an option as it will not happen accidentally. Thus, needs to be done by design. If you're dedicated to developing and implementing the design consistently, there you go. Most of your clients will be high-paying clients in a year or less. Now, let us take a look on what is meant by belief. Our core belief system has been constructed and shaped throughout our lives based on numerous events we've experienced that we perceive as true or false. Do you realize that most of our beliefs are shaped by others, such as parents, TV, and social norms? However, the challenge is, most of us are unconsciously deciding what we're going to believe. Instead, our beliefs are often misinterpretations of past events. As an illustration, let's take a look at this analogy into belief. Think of a belief as a tabletop, and without any legs, the tabletop won't even stand up by itself, right? So what if belief has legs? Here is when you want to believe in something. You have the references to support the idea. The references are the specific experiences that back up the belief, whereby in this case, the legs are the supporting evidence. These are the legs that make your tabletop solid and thus, it makes you certain about your beliefs. To put it another way, I'm going to give you an example just for you to get the idea of belief. Let's say if you believe that you're not good at mathematics, you probably have a lot of references to back it up. Maybe you've answered wrongly in class for several times, you failed the last two tests, or maybe your mother said something like this, I'm afraid you got my genes in the math department, my dear, and it could be many other reasons that you could refer to make a stand on your belief. So based on the references above, you can find experiences to back up almost any belief that you hold on to. Now let us see how strong the power of belief is. It's either your belief helps you or hurts you, or either it can empower you or cage you in forever. This short story will show you the effects of beliefs. Elephant keepers have an interesting way of keeping their elephants from running away. They tie them to a wooden peg with a rope. It doesn't make sense on the surface since a rope like that has no hope of holding a grown elephant. But ask any elephant keeper and he will chuckle and explain, when a baby elephant is born, the herder ties it to a peg with a rope. At this point, the rope is strong enough to hold the elephant. The baby elephant quickly learns that trying to escape the rope is futile, and he keeps that learning with him even as he grows up and the rope becomes far too weak to hold him. One day, the circus accidentally went on fire and the elephant died. He was enormous and he could have easily ripped the pole out of the ground or run away to safety. But there was a self-limiting belief in his mind that told him he would not be able to do it, and so he did not even try. Like the elephants, we often form beliefs that might be useful at first but then hold us back in life, long after the original reasons are gone. This can be concluded by a quote by Anthony Robbins. Beliefs have the power to create and the power to destroy. Now back to the famous quote on belief from Star Wars, which I've mentioned earlier. The lesson to be learned here could be related to a scene where Master Yoda uses the Force to lift the entire crashed ship out of the swamp, moves it through the air, and gently places the ship on firm land 
as light as a feather. Luke Skywalker stammers, I, I, I don't believe it. And the Jedi Master replies, and that is why you fail. Again, I would like to highlight it here. Despite the question of whether we could achieve the targeted goal or strategy, it's normally our skepticism or doubt that restricts us from fully dedicating, which eventually becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, when things fail to work out as we thought they would. Our beliefs somehow affect how we apply ourselves and will eventually give impacts to our success. So how to turn your self-limiting belief to a belief that is empowering you? When there is a little voice that says, you're not good enough or you're not able to do it, turn it to this. If I could help someone to get the result for themselves faster, easier, and more efficiently than they could do it for themselves, that's all the credentials I need. After you've grasped the idea of belief, how far the power of belief could influence you and how to scratch the limit to yourself in believing something, you are now ready to sell to high-paying clients. One requires different selling approach and skills in closing high-paying clients. Here we have five ways in the list that you should pay attention to. One, how to position yourself as an expert. Two, how to identify and qualify the right clients. Three, how to get clients' interest and present the opportunity. Four, how to handle different sales objections. And five, closing skills. These points will be further elaborated in the next section. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.